Now, if you understand what's technically going on inside a striker fire pistol, all of them failing like this actually makes perfect sense. In all pistols, the component that releases the component under tension to discharge the weapon is the trigger group housed in the frame. In a hammer-fired pistol, the hammer is the mechanism under tension that when released discharges the round. And it's also housed in the frame, so you can't change the spatial relationship between the trigger group and the hammer without breaking one or more components. But in a striker-fired pistol, the striker is the mechanism under tension, and it's housed in the slide. So you can change the spatial relationship between the trigger group and the striker by twisting, pressing, or tapping on the weapon. And once the internal safety mechanisms are disengaged by taking all of the travel out of the trigger, changing the spatial relationship between the trigger group and the striker will cause the weapon to discharge and all striker fire pistols have been demonstrated to have this vulnerability. Now, all of the phrasing in SIG's video about this, and a lot of the phrasing of the comments on my last video about this, revolves around the assertion that a partial depression of the trigger is a trigger pull, and thus the P320 can't discharge without the trigger being pulled. But that's all legalese semantics. I'm not trying to sue SIG, and I'm not trying to put SIG out of business. So I don't care about legal semantic definitions for the purposes of liability. I only care if a weapon can ever be put into a state where it could inadvertently discharge, harming a service member.